How are we doing today? I'm Rebecca Seja, work with Richmond Public Schools, and today we are going to be working on Lesson 21 in our unique system, and this is actually part two of the same lesson. So let's revisit what we did in part one. So actually, before that, um, why don't you go ahead and maybe grab your work from part one, as well as another piece of paper and a pencil, because we're going to be doing a little bit of work um, toward the end of our lesson that you're going to need to write out. So you can press pause and then come right back to us and we will um, begin our lesson together. All right, we have everybody back. Perfect. All right, so you recognize this graph from our last lesson. This lesson tied right in with our reading um, from the chapter book, Lights, Sound, or Sound, Lights, and Theater. It was chapter two, where we talked about um, decibels and we learned how um, the greater the sound is, the more decibel, the higher the decibel number, which is how we measure sound. Like we measure length in inches, uh, feet, yards, miles. Um, with sound, we measure it in decibels. So here we talked about um, how with every graph, it has very important information on it. So it should always have a title. We should have the information going up the side that's telling us what we're be having measured and for um, the uh, increments of measurement within that. So for this particular one, it's a bar graph that's laying on its side. So it's a horizontal bar graph. And so that's why we have the names up the side, the numbers for the bottom. So here we learned that each of these squares from this line to this line was worth 20, right? And then we learned that not all of them reach all the way across to that 20. And so we had to decide, well, how are we going to know that if it's measured at 30, how do we represent that in the graph? And so we talked about how we could make hash marks and we count at 20 and we keep counting till we hit the number um, that is most appropriate or that is the correct number that we want. So down on the bottom, the increments are going across at 20, at 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and 140. And we learned that this was really like counting by twos. If we just ignore the zero, we take that zero away, we're counting at two, four, six, eight, 10, 20, and 40. So the principle of 10. All right, now let's look at today's graph. Today's graph is a bit different and it's called a double bar graph. Now here our bar graphs are vertical. They're not going across the top, across the side, side to side. They're <clears throat> going from the bottom to the top. What we also know is that notice that, <coughs> excuse me, is different is that we have the names of what's being measured across the bottom and how we're measuring them, what, what increments in across up the side. So the title of our bar, double bar graph is Favorite Concert to Attend. Now you notice we have different colors, right? We have a blue and we have orange, but what do those mean? How do we know what that means? So we look for our key, and the key is we now know that blue is for boys and that orange is representing girls. So why a double bar graph? What, wh how does that help us, and when would we use that? So in this particular graph, we're looking at this specific item, the jet taking off sound. So we only have one bar because it's just jets in general. But if we were talking about different kinds of jet, more powerful jets, then we would have many different colors in this category because we're comparing those jets to the same speed. 
in this one, we have a group of people, right? And we have one question, what is the favorite concert to attend? But we wanna take the information of that question apart. So here we wanna know boys and girls. What's the boys' favorite part, favorite concert, and what's the girls' favorite concert? But we wanna know it for particular concerts. So we're gonna ask the same question about country, about classical, about pop and rock, but to that same set. So we only have to ask the question one time and record the answers for each. So here for country, we have three, because now we know that we're only counting from ones, correct? We start at zero. We go to one, two, three, four, five, six. So each of these lines only represents the one. So we have three, what color? Boys, good. And orange is for girls, very good. How many girls? Four girls, excellent. So which is greater? Which liked country music more, boys or girls? You're right, it's girls. So boys is the least and girls are the greatest. Let's look at classical. Classical, which was the greatest? Who liked it the most, boys or girls? Girls, girls was how many? Two, and boys were one. And remember, if you're having a hard time following, you can put just a ruler up to the computer to help you follow across. Or if you're working on a piece of paper, you can use a ruler or another piece of paper to kind of just help you connect the top of that bar all the way over to where the numbers are, okay? All right, now, if we compare classical to country, how many more boys liked country or let's ask a different question which liked which set of boys liked country or classical more so if we're looking at only boys did the boys like country more or classical more well classical is one but country is three so which did the boys like the most, country or classical? Yes, they liked country more. So at pop, let's look over here at pop. Look here, they are exactly the same, right? We go over, we go all the way over to five. Five boys and five girls liked pop equally. Very good. Now that's a little different. Look at this really tall blue line we have here representing boys. Let's see what kind of concert that was. Rock. So we have how many boys liked rock? Six. But when we look at girls that liked rock, how many liked rock? How many girls? Three liked rock. So definitely more boys than girls enjoy going to a rock concert. But let's take a look at our questions, okay? So our questions, we're gonna, it's the same graph, but we're gonna keep it blown up just a bit so it's easier to follow along. All right, let's read all of our questions first to kind of help just get our minds focused on our graph that we looked at. How many more boys voted for rock over girls? How many more? So if we're looking at more, was, does more mean we're going to add or subtract? How many more? You can ask a family member if you need a little bit of help. 
we're going to subtract. Very good. Because we want to know how many more boys than girls liked rock concerts. Look at number two. What is the total number of students who voted for country? What is the total? Now for total, are we putting together or are we taking apart for total? Think about that a second. Are we putting it together or taking it apart? We're putting it together, very good. So how many total is the total number of students that enjoyed country? Next question, which concert got the least votes? Which concert got the least votes? Now, least, we have to think about that. Is least mean that it was the greatest number or the smallest number? Least. The smallest number. Very good. So which concert got the least votes? Question four, which concert got the most votes? Which concert got the most votes? So most we're looking at the, if least was the smallest number, then of course most is the, yes, it's the greatest number. Very good. And then number five, based on this data, now data can sound like a fancy word, but data is just numbers based on all of the information, all the information that we have. Will, the, are, will more boys or more girls want to go to a country fest 2020? Based on this data, will more boys or more girls want to go to a country fest 2020? So country fest would be like this really great big concert. And usually a fest means that it's happening outside. Uh, there's all kinds of food vendors and uh, people cooking food that you can buy. Um, people are there that you can buy their t-shirts, you can buy their albums, and it's a great big um, celebration of that particular type of music. So based on our data, will more boys or more girls want to go to a country fest? All right, are you ready to work out all of our math? Got a paper and pencil? Very good, okay, here we go. Let's go back to our first set of questions. All right, how many more boys voted for rock over girls? So of course, we've gotta go back to our chart and we've gotta look at rock. Where is rock? And remember, all you have to do is click and it's gonna read it for you. Rock, okay. So we look at boys is blue. We look at boys, we go all the way over and it's six, right? So you've got your paper and your pencil. So we're gonna need to write down six. And how many girls? Go all the way over and it's how many? Three girls. Now we said, the question was, how many more? Now we said that how many more meant that we were doing what? We were subtracting. Now it looks like on the camera that shows up reverse. So let me erase that. So it, it looks proper for you and you're not going, oh, Mrs. Seed, you wrote everything backwards. All right. Very hard to write backwards, boys, young ladies and gentlemen. I forget that you guys are in high school. All right, here we go. Okay, now does that show up proper? Yes, it does. <laughs> Except, the, look, my subtraction sign is on the wrong side. All right. There we go. So it's kind of like holding something up to a mirror, and in a mirror it looks backwards, right? So. Here we go, now we're all set. Now, what are the different ways that we can subtract? 
how, what are the different ways we can subtract? Now we can just know our math facts. We know that if we know our doubles, we know three plus three equals six. So we would know in our fact families that three and six, so six minus three would be three. But if we don't know that, what are our other strategies we can use? We can make hash marks, right? One, two, three, four, five, six hash marks. We can make three hash marks and we can subtract those out. So we can have take away, how many we're going to take away? One, two, three and how many does that leave us right it leaves us three so we would know the answer is well let me write it backwards we would know the answer is three correct now what is another strategy we could use think about it for just a minute what's another strategy that we could use right we could put our dots on our numbers, okay? So for the number six, we're gonna put six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And on the three, we're gonna do three dots. But then we have to subtract away those dots. So we take away one, two, three dots and how many do we have left how many dots do we have left we have three dots left so we know that our answer is what three very good all right now what is the total number of students who voted for country total so are we adding or subtracting for total we're adding, so let's find country. And we have how many boys and how many girls? Very good, we have three boys and four girls. So you can start on a fresh piece of paper. I'm going to erase and remember to write backwards for you so it shows up properly. So we have <clears throat> four, We have four plus three, and you can use whichever strategy you want, if you wanna make your hash marks, or if you wanna draw your dots, okay? I'm gonna draw our dots for us. Four dots on our number four, and three dots on our number three, and we're gonna add those together one two three four five six seven seven very good now we're going to go over answer our question seven excellent now which concert got the least votes now total told us that we were going to add And here we have to know the least number of votes. Which concert had the least? So let's go back to our graph, take a look at it. Look at all of the bars. Which one has the least? Now, if we just look at it, it's kind of obvious, right? We look at classical and we have one. We look at one for the boys and two for the girls. Is there another set that is the least? There isn't. So do we necessarily have to do the math? No, because visually we can see that classical has the least amount of votes. Classical. Let's see question number four. Which concert got the most votes altogether? Which concert 
got the most votes. Hmm. So let's look closely. Now, we just said that classical had the least, so that's not even a choice, correct? So we won't pay any attention to that. Now, then that leaves us with country, and its greatest number is four. And then we come over to pop. Both of those boys and girls were the same number, and that is five. Okay, this had the most votes, but we had five boys and five girls. So let's let's add that up, okay? Let's add that up. If we had five boys, let's see. You write down five for boys and five for girls, okay? Then let's look over at rock. Now they're looking for C, which one had the most votes all together. And so let's look at rock. Rock is six boys and how many girls? Three girls. So let's write that math problem down. Let's write down how many? Six, and we're putting all together, so we're we adding or subtracting? Yes, we are adding. Six plus three, okay, write that down. Six, so for our pop concert, it was five boys plus five girls. And for our rock concert, it was six boys and three girls. Now, what we have to do is find out which got the most votes. So remember, the girls are a vote and the boys are a vote. But we have to put those together to see which has the most. So, you go ahead and do use your strategy, or do you just know your doubles and five plus five is the answer, or do you need to put your dots, or do you need to use hash marks? Whichever strategy you need to do, go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna do it and let's come back together, okay? I'm gonna use the dots, okay? Are you doing dots or are you doing hash marks? What did you decide to do? Now, of course you can use a calculator, but for this one, let's not use a calculator. For this one, let's actually do our math, okay? Okay, we're ready. Did you did you use your strategy? Okay, so let's look at first our pop concert. Five plus five. If we know our doubles, we know it's ten. But if we don't know our doubles, we can just count our dots. We put five dots on each number five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Ten. So ten ten for the pop concert. Now, now we have to look at the rock concert. Okay. We had six plus three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Guys really should try writing upside down and backwards at the same time. It's a whole lot of fun. All right. For the rock concert. 
Did I spell it right? No, it's backwards. <laughs> oh, I got to start with my R over on the other side. All right. R O C <laughs> K. Does that look correct? Yep, that's pretty good. Okay, that's one of your homeworks. You guys need to practice writing upside down and backwards and then hold it up to a mirror and see whether or not you get the same reflection. And sometime we will do, um, I promise you, we will do a science lesson on reflection transformation and all those types of cool things um, on how a same shape can look differently if we flip it or we slide it or we use a mirror image of it. All right, that is just a little side note. But if we look at our answers, for pop, we had 10, and for rock, we had nine. See, it was important to do the math with that because at a first glance, you think rock must have gotten the most votes because the boys shot all the way up to the top of the um, graph, right? They were at six, so of course they must have gotten the same. But the question was, which concert got the most votes and so now we know that our most votes was the pop concert okay all right and here is our last question for today based on this data and remember data is a fancy word for information and numbers based on this data will more boys or more girls want to go to a country fest 2020 so a country fest is like this great big celebration of a particular type of music it might be country or pop or rock or classical but here the question is country so let's go back to our chart let's look at country we had three boys four girls so which is more likely to go to a country fest celebration in 2020, boys or girls? You're absolutely right. It is the girls are more likely to go to the celebration than the boys are. All right, excellent. It was great spending time with you today. I hope that you are um, learning and um, just kind of keeping your skills up during this time while we're home. Enjoy spending time with your family. Enjoy um, being able to just catch up and improve your skills and maybe explore and learn some new things during this time that really interest you um, that you can come back and tell your teachers about in the fall. All right, enjoy yourself, stay safe and stay healthy. Have a good evening, bye-bye.